in this video, I'm going to be teaching you how I did this DIY textured ocean art. I really love the look of this coastal vibe. It still has a little bit of that minimalist feel, but adding more of that coastal look to your home. In this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did this project, as well as all of the materials needed for this piece. I'm going to be linking all of the materials down below and you will find in this video a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to do this coastal textured art. If you're new here, I'm Allison. I am a model and influencer, but also a new homeowner. So I have a whole home series that I'm doing from start to finish on how I bought, furnished, and decorated my home, including DIY projects like this. Some of you may have come from my DIY textured minimalist art videos, and this piece is very similar to that style of art. However, it's a little bit different in the way that the medium was created. I really wanted to have that minimalist look, but still give my home a coastal feel since I bought a Florida home very close to the beach. I could not find anywhere any tutorials or blogs or anything on how to do this style art, especially with the ocean tones and the different textures of this. So I thought I would make a video as I learned throughout the process. It actually worked out great. I made a little sample one first before doing this big project. And it was especially hard to find how to do this on this large of a scale. I really love the different textures and tones that this kind of art brings to my home. I had this pictured in my head exactly like this. So I'm extremely happy with how it turned out. And in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I did it. To start, I got these absolutely horrendous um, peacock paintings from the at-home store. A little trick to getting cheap canvases is just buy them from a store like Home Goods, the at-home store, Marshalls. They always have huge canvases, really cheap, and then I just paint them white. I just use a cheap white um, painter primer house paint that I just had on hand, um, but I'm going to link one down below as well. What you need for this project is pretty simple. I'm linking everything down below through an Amazon link that you can use. You can also get some of this stuff at Home Depot and the grocery store. Um, I just use this plastic tray I got at like Publix to mix all of my paints, but I'll see if I can find a similar one and link it down below. It actually works out great. I had this for an appetizer tray for a party I went to. I needed like a last minute dish and I got this and it works great for mixing the paint. So I use this and then you will need baking soda for the texture of this project. Um, the baking soda is what gives it that really cool um, textured effect and it makes the colors look um, kind of matte. So I really, really like this. This is absolutely necessary. Um, I use the Arm Hammer baking soda. This works the best for these kind of projects. Um, I also have a paintbrush. I painted these already so you can see them behind me and you can see my little test one as I was mixing the paints. There was no tutorial I could find on this. I had seen them on Pinterest and I really wanted to do it, but I could not find a tutorial on making the textured art with colors. So I figured it out on my own. I went to Joanne's Fabric and I got these um, pigments and I just mixed them in until I got the color I wanted. I really, really like this um, Gamblin 1980 blue color. Um, this one made the most beautiful pastel blue. And of course with these, you can continue to add more and more to get the color that you want. Um, these are on Amazon, so I link these down below. I use the Golden Artist Acrylics color in the shade um, Raw Sienna. This pigment I used for the sand and it was gorgeous. So we're gonna use that on the big canvas today, but I used it on this one back here to test it out. And you'll also need white paint. I did use just like a regular house primer paint for the big canvases, but I'll use the acrylic for um, the details. And then I also picked up these. These were super cheap at Home Depot, like $3. I will link it down below. Um, and these are super helpful when getting all of the shapes you want with the drywall. So this is the drywall that I use. This is the best one to use for these projects because it is more of a kind of light gray and it dries a little bit off white. Um, so this is great when working with colors because a lot of the other um, drywalls or joint compound that you would use 
come hot pink and then they dry more of a, a white color. Um, so it's really, really hard to tell what color you have. So this is the best one for doing these projects. I use these on all of the ones in my other videos that I used in my old house. So this is what you need. You can get this at Home Depot and I'm also linking it down below. Um, Amazon has really good deals on this. And then also these paintbrushes are great. They're super cheap. And so if you mess one up, you can just like keep using all of these for the different colors. These are awesome. And then of course you need a pencil so that you can kind of outline what you want to do. So I'm starting out with drawing a line kind of where I want the water to meet the sand. And then this was me nervous, not knowing what I'm getting into here. And look at me being so handy with these pliers, opening the joint compound. It's a little tricky, so you may need some help opening it. And I'm gonna start with a couple heaping scoops of this. You need more than you think. And I'm going to mix in that raw sienna shade with the joint compound and add in quite a bit of the Arm & Hammer baking soda. You're going to have to just kind of keep adding it and mixing it as if you were baking cookies until you get the right consistency and texture that you want. You can test it out with a smaller spatula to make sure it's the right color and consistency you want. Remember, we are going for sand, so you want it to be pretty textured. So now I'm really gonna start just slapping it down on there. There's a lot of ground to cover here. So you will need a lot of material. The great thing about using the joint compound, it does not dry quickly. So you have so much room to play. And if you mess up, you can just redo it. I'm using a little scrub daddy for some extra sand texture, but I also used a smaller spatula to flick up the compound to make kind of those sand-like strokes. Also, don't forget to do the edges. I think it just makes it look super neat and complete and more of that 3D effect. And when you see it at the end, it kind of looks like cake or something. I want to eat it. You can see how the texture looks now. And when it's dried, it looks a lot more sand-like. All right, so next we're on to blue. I'm going to try to match that really beautiful pastel blue that I sampled. And I'm not going to lie, landing on this color is pretty tricky. I tried a couple different blues and this 1980, I think it's called Ultimate Blue, was the best shade of blue for what I was looking for. That is linked down below. You can see I added a little bit of white acrylic in there for that different texture. And I actually did not add baking soda to begin with. I just really wanted to slap a bunch of that medium on the canvas. Now I'm going to add in the Arm & Hammer baking soda. I'm glad I did it in this kind of two part uh, step with one with just a joint compound and the pigments and then the next had the baking soda. It really made the finished product have more depth in the look of the waves and also the color. You will see that at the end. You can see now kind of the flicking motion that I'm doing with the spatulas to give the look of the waves. I kind of focus with having the product um, towards the end as if it was 3D coming off of the canvas. Just make sure that you don't have too much baking soda or when it dries, it can crack. Here's what it looked like as it dried. You can see it dries a lot lighter and with more texture. So again, be careful not to add too much baking soda on the parts that are super raised or they can kind of flake off and crumble. All right, let's rip these waves. I let the canvas dry a couple days before doing this part so that everything was really solid to put this on top because this is a lot of layers, you guys. I'm adding a lot of white acrylic paint and then lots and lots of baking soda, but honestly, I didn't really need to do the white paint because I ended up painting over it with acrylic and baking soda anyway. You can see here, I'm really layering it on thick so it gives that lifted texture of the waves it may crack when it drives so just be aware of that and i do have a solution if that happens so the thicker you make the paint the easier it can crack when it dries i love the texture the joint compound gives it makes it look so beautiful this is what it looks like wet and i will show you guys what it looks like when it's dried Okay, so you can see here where it cracked. This is where I messed up and I put way too much baking soda in certain spots. And just regardless, layering it on top of layers can cause it to crack like this, but don't worry. I'm going to show you how to fix it and it will end up looking amazing. I'm taking here leftover white paint and adding that baking soda for the texture. 
and you will stir it until it's pretty thick. You'll see here the consistency I'm talking about. And this is literally not only going to give you the texture you want for the painting, but it's going to act like glue and fill in those cracks and really glue all of those pieces down to the entire canvas. This is what the waves look like after the first coat with the paint. You may only need one coat. I let this dry for a day and then I went in for round two. And here's what it looks like after the second layer of paint. I really layered it on those edges so that it really glued the waves down to the canvas. And here's what it looked like when it's completely dry. So I let it sit here for a couple days to really harden before I hung it up. And here's the final look. I'm so, so happy with the way that these turned out. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you found it helpful. Be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them in the comments down below and I'll do my best to answer. Bye.